what we're doing with this ballistic pendulum is we have initially a pendulum which is composed of basically a block of wood hung by two strings. This is what it initially looks like, and we have a bullet going toward the block of wood. The bullet is going to run into the block of wood, get embedded in the block of wood, and then the block of wood is going to swing upward such that it will end somewhere up here with the bullet embedded in it before it comes sliding, comes swinging back down. It's the concept of a ballistic pendulum. We are going to solve this. We're going to say that we have several knowns. We know the velocity of the, well, let me do that. Yeah, the velocity of the bullet at what I'm going to call position one. Now, to understand, position one is the bullet is moving toward the block, but it has not run into it yet. Position two is going to be after the bullet has run into the block of wood and it has stopped, but the block of wood has not had time to move yet. So notice that that's not quite correct. The block of wood will actually start to swing before the bullet stops, but we're making, we're approximating here, we're saying that the bullet is going to stop before the block of wood slides up. And then position three is going to be after the bullet is in the block of wood, it has swung all the way up to the top. So again, another approximation there, but it, it turns out that it's pretty close to correct. So we know the velocity one of the bullet. We know the mass of the bullet, the mass of the wood, and we know that the velocity for the wood for part one is equal to zero. In other words, the ballistic pendulum to begin with is at rest. And what we're trying to find is what is the final height to which the ballistic pendulum will swing to. We have to look at this in two parts. From one to two, we know some stuff to be true. And from two to three, we know some stuff to be true. What do we know is true from one to two? For when the bullet is initially before it runs into the block of wood and after it is running into the block of wood, what is true then? How do we know momentum is conserved when the bullet is being stopped by the block of wood? Uh, I agree with that. That would be the argument from last year. I agree with that. That's good to know. But what's the argument from this year? Jenkins. There's no outside forces. The net force adds up to zero. There's a force that slows the bullet down, but that force is also equal to opposite acts on, acts on wood. Therefore, from one to two, we know that the net force, which equals the derivative of momentum as a function of time, is equal to zero. Therefore, the sum of the initial momentums equals the sum of the final momentums. So for, from one to two, what I'm going to put is the initial momentum, which is the momentum at position one, equals the momentum at position two. So we could clearly solve it that way. Actually, we'll, we'll do that first. So let's work with this. Please give me all the variables here, uh, Eric, match for the momentum at position one. Um, just like, so it's before it even comes in contact with the block? Or? So this, this piece right here is before the bullet comes in contact with the block, correct? Okay. So is that just mass of, or yeah, mass of? bullet times velocity one of bullet. Correct, plus. Um, it's going to end up being zero, but I want to put it up there just to make sure. It's just the mass of the block times the last initial. Error. I'm putting wood instead of blocks. We don't have two Bs. <laughs> the velocity for part one for the wood. Again, that goes to zero. And what do we have uh, for part two then? Um, Mitch. Um, 
mass of the block plus the mass of the... Huh, okay, rather than block, can you say wood? Oh, right, wood. Mass of the wood. Plus mass of the bullet. And some of that times the velocity. I'm going to do this in two steps, just to make sure we understand. This is the mass of the wood block multiplied by the velocity for part two for the wood block, plus the mass of the bullet times the velocity for part two for the bullet. So on the left, we have the mass of the bullet times the velocity for part one of the bullet is equal to, now what did you assume on the right, that finish? The velocity is the same. Right, because, and we know this to be true because the bullet is embedded in the block. Therefore, we know the velocity for part two for the wood block is equal to the velocity for part two for the bullet. So I'm just going to call that velocity for part two. So we have the mass of the wood plus the mass of the bullet times the velocity for part two. So we have a relationship here. I'm just going to put that in our equation holster. I don't really know what to do with it at this point. Uh, what do we know from position two to position three here? Well, we don't, the, during part, from two to three, I'm going to say actually no, because we would have a net force acting on it, which is going to slow it down, which is going to cause an acceleration. So the net force would not be equal to zero from two to three. It's OK. So during this, we have mechanical energy is conserved. Well, how do we know we have conservation of mechanical energy? Uh, Jenkins? No force supply, no force friction. No friction, no force applied. So we know we have mechanical energy at two is equal to mechanical energy at three. What type of mechanical do, energy do we have at position two? Travis. Um, you have uh, kinetic energy. Kinetic energy at position two. Uh, for what? For uh, the, the wood and the wood. So I'll call that the total kinetic energy, right? What about the mechanical energy at position three? Uh, Zach? For what? For the for, for total. What am I missing? Zero. If we set our zero line, we'll set our zero line right where the bullet is to begin with. I would agree that we start out with no gravitational potential energy. We only have kinetic energy. We end with gravitational potential energy. So we have one half mass total times velocity for part two squared equals mass total times g times height three. Where do you draw mass? <laughs> come on, come on. Right, here we go, here we go. thing is, we do, we're going to do this so many times in this class that I have a bunch of other ones. Cause it's <laughs> okay, everyone brought mass to the party. So we can now have, uh, let's see, we have velocity 2 squared over 2 equals g h3. h3 is just the height we're solving for, so h3 equals velocity 2 squared divided by 2 g. So if you look, we need to solve for the velocity for part two, which is equal to the mass of the bullet times the velocity one of the bullet divided by the mass of the wood plus the mass of the bullet. We can substitute that in over here. We get that height three is equal to the velocity for part two, which is the mass of the bullet times the velocity for part one for the bullet. That's uh, divided by the mass of the wood plus the mass of the bullet. That quantity squared divided by two. So height three then is equal to mass of the bullet times velocity one of the bullet divided by four g squared mass of the wood plus mass of the bullet. For the following students, please come to the office. Lauren Hoffman, oh, Blake Curry, Kelly Owens, Gina McNamara. Ladies and gentlemen, have a beautiful day. Thanks for learning with me today. I trust you. Enjoyed my demo.